guys, it's Danny. As promised, today we're gonna harvest some live sphagnum moss. Oh yes, you heard me right. And no, I didn't purchase this moss. I was lucky enough to have some sphagnum moss spores or bits and pieces of moss just sprout back to life from the dry moss that I was using. So today we're gonna take a look and see how we can harvest it, put it separately and try to multiply it. The end goal is to actually have enough so that I can use it as top layer with some orchids on top of the dried sphagnum moss. So before we go ahead and do that, let me just show you the brand that I used because this has never happened to me. So here it is, many of you already know this, it's just sphag moss from Best Grow. And I have it in a 40 liter bag here. There are multiple sizes you can purchase. Now, if you research on the internet, you will see forums or blogs or discussions or people just talking that you can actually obtain a live sphagnum moss from the dried one, from this one. However, it's kind of rare or it doesn't actually happen all the time. So don't understand that this will definitely guarantee you'll get some live moss if you try it. For example, Brad here on YouTube, he's always tried this but never had success. So he buys his live sphagnum moss. But I guess it can happen, obviously. And if you already have this, why not give it a go if you want to see if you can get some live sphagnum moss. You can also purchase the live sphagnum moss. In my area, it's kind of tricky to do that. I've never tried because I'm not sure how it will handle transport. I live on an island and things take their time to reach me. So I never actually tried it, but I'm very, very happy because I've always fancied trying to grow this moss and now I have the opportunity to do so. This is actually a recovering orchid. It's an Angraecum, which absolutely hated Leka. I lost the root system, so I just plucked it in sphagnum moss to promote some roots and I do have some roots here. It is time to move this orchid because I have a feeling moss is not really the best medium for it. So it's just about time to move it anyway. Uh, the moss has been here for the past three or four months and I kept it under my artificial light, under the LED panel, not direct sunshine. I barely fertilized it. I think I fertilized it just once. As you might know, I don't actually fertilize recovering orchids. I first want to see the roots taking off and then I fertilize them, which ended up being good because moss really doesn't like fertilizer. It hates excess salts. I've also kept this orchid fairly moist all of the time. It never went bone dry which again is something moss generally likes. Moss does not like dryness or drought. It will die very fast if things go very dry. The source of water that I used is the one that I use with all of my orchids, it's my osmosis water. So it's very, very low in salt content. And pretty much that's about it. There is, however, one more thing that I used on this orchid. And this is Quantum Orchid. Now, if you don't know about this product, you have no idea what it is, I'll link you down below to a video that I made on it. I explain more there. This is not a fertilizer or anything of the sorts. It is a culture of bacteria and microbes, all of those things that actually exist in nature and it's very hard to obtain them in our growing spaces, which facilitate the growth of plants. Some of them produce plant hormones, some of them produce sugar, some of them synthesize nitrogen and so on and so forth. If this actually helped, I'm not entirely sure. I will be making an experiment off camera. It's gonna take a few months, so we're just gonna have to wait for that. I want to promote some sphagnum moss in a container without any other additional additives, let's say, just my osmosis water, and then one container with this stuff, because there is a chance this actually helped. Since I don't really have any live sphagnum moss in other containers, which have not been treated so much with this thing, Maybe it has something to do with it. I just treated the orchid actually. I wanted it to produce roots faster and it did. Um, it's actually producing roots quite nice. So that is pretty much the backstory of the sphagnum moss. I really didn't try to promote it, but now that it happened, I'm very, very excited to just harvest it. So we are going to unpot this orchid. I'm gonna prepare another container for the moss and I'm gonna take you guys along. Okay, so here is what I will be using. This is a container that I found at my local grocery shop. It's really shallow and this is what I want with sphagnum moss. This plant does not have roots, so there's no need for deep pots. Typically sphagnum moss is grown in trays, but I don't have enough quantity to justify a tray, so this will be perfect for it. I'm also going to make it self-watering because sphagnum moss should never be dry and in my environment, things can get really, really dry. So I paired it with this decorative container, MPS. This is from Ikea, this is the name. 
Hopefully they didn't discontinue it. I see that they do have a tendency to discontinue stuff. And also, if this is not enough, I also have a lid I can poke a few holes to maintain the setup even more moist. I don't think it's gonna be needed though because there is a lot of water in this reservoir, but we'll see how to go about it. You might ask what about algae? Well, I don't intend to fertilize this. Moss shouldn't really be fertilized. Some growers do offer nutrients, but very, 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 very sparingly. Anyway, I personally don't intend to feed it and we'll just see how it goes. So algae will not be an issue, theoretically, because they will have nothing to feed on. Now, we actually do need a medium, even though the moss doesn't have roots. It will help us maintain the moss very wet. And the best medium for live moss is dry moss. And who knows, maybe I'm gonna get even more moss. But I will add a layer of sphagnum moss. This is just some moss left over from my plantings. I usually keep it in a bowl and it just dries in the air. I don't store it in any way once I hydrate it. So I think this is about enough. And now it's actually time to unpot this orchid and try to obtain the existing moss. So I got you in a little closer to see what I'm doing here. I will actually just unpot the orchid. I do wanna keep the orchid in good condition as well. Oh wow, look at that. Isn't it just wonderful? This is 100% moss. This is not algae here. And you can see it because it has these growths or these, not rosettes, not very knowledgeable in the language of moss, but you get the idea. You can actually see their individual strands, their individual plants. It's lovely. And they are grown on the existing sphagnum moss pieces. So I'm not going to detach them in any way. I will just try to save the strands and I'm going to plant it just like this actually. So I'm gonna put it to the side I'm gonna try to work pretty fast because I don't actually want it to dry out. Oh, look at that, I have so many here. Let me give you a close up because this is actually very, very interesting how it grew from the existing strands of sphagnum moss. Okay, so this is actually more than I expected to find. So I had to dump away a bit of the sphagnum moss. This is all good green moss. Well, most of it is dead, but the live one is indeed sprouting from the dried sphagnum moss. This over here is mainly algae, and I do want to limit algae as much as possible. So, so now I'm just going to put this moss just on top like this together with the original strands. I'm going to try to make it face upwards, obviously. And it's okay if some overlap, but I'm going to try not to make them overlap too much. Look at that. Can you imagine if it's something else? Um, I do believe it's moss though. It seems to be sprouting from the old one. So I'm going to arrange it. I'm gonna speed up the process and come back to see if we can make another container. Okay, I would say we're pretty much full here. So what I'm gonna do is just fill the reservoir. This is just osmosis water, no fertilizer, no additives, no nothing. Just gonna pour it over and make sure that I do have water in my reservoir. Actually gonna pour the rest in the reservoir directly. Okay, let's fill another container. Alrighty, and here they are. I'm just gonna give you a close up as we're gonna talk about it. I decided not to keep the other moss because it was actually full of algae, but I got two containers, which is great. And I think off camera, I will be doing some experiments apart from trying to keep them alive. I'm going to water one with pure water, plain water, and the other one with the quantum orchid and see if there is actually any difference. Also off camera, I'm gonna try to sprout sphagnum moss yet again, but this time without additional orchids in it. Because there is still a chance that this is actually not sphagnum moss, it's just a moss that that orchid had on her roots, who knows. I tend to doubt it, let me show you why. Another recovering orchid is this Catlia seedling, which has been potted after the other one, but she has been sitting here for about two months, I think. 
and I do see that in this pouch as well, apart from the algae, I do have moss sprouting as well. Do you see these little rosettes here? Yeah, that's live moss. I'm not sure if it's sphagnum moss. But there we have it. So either this moss had some spores of other mosses, either it is actually sphagnum moss. But it's not limited only to that orchid. However, I do see a trend. This is a recovering orchid as well. She has been treated with quantum orchid as well. She has been sitting here under my uh, artificial light, no sunlight. She hasn't been fertilized pretty much almost never, and she has been kept rather moist. I do actually have other orchids in sphagnum moss which have been fertilized. They haven't been sitting very, very moist and actually don't seem to be having anything sprouting there. This is one of them. This is my Neophenicia. And this moss is about one year at this point, almost a year old. So it is a pretty old moss. I actually reused it. If you remember, I had it in the clay pot. Me and clay pots don't get along. But anyway, due to the fact that this orchid is actually feeding actively and is growing actively, I don't have a lot of algae on this pot, but I also don't have moss because it's rather dry. The Neophenicia should be rather dry in the winter time. So I can see how moss didn't grow here. And there are other examples, but I think the moss developed better in those pots which were constantly moist and they didn't get a lot of fertilizer. Now the orchid herself is actually doing pretty great as well. We have growing tips on the existing roots and quite a lot of new roots sprouting. And even though upstairs we don't look the greatest, it is to be expected. I thought I would lose this orchid actually. So I'm happy to see she's making a recovery. So off camera, I'm going to repot it in a bark mixture, probably the one that is meant for Phalaenopsis from Repot Me. And I'm pretty sure she will be okay. So don't worry about the low lying gracum. And as for the moss, I will be keeping it in the same location under the LED panels and obviously it will always and forever stay moist. Hopefully it's going to be enough. If not, I'm just going to put the lid on and hey presto, we have humidity. I might just poke some holes as well, but I think it's going to work. I think it's going to be okay. And I'm hoping this is sphagnum moss. For those of you who have experience, let me know what you think down below. If it's not sphagnum moss, well, it's a moss and I'm hoping I can grow it because any moss looks actually very, very cute. Let me just show you another type of moss and I forgot the gloves on. This here is a different type of moss. It is what orchids usually come with on the top of their pots. So as you can see, it's not as green. I mean, I don't know. Do you think it's this moss? I highly doubt it. I've never had it sprout just out of the blue inside the pot, but you never know. But there you have it. This one appears to be growing rather slow, but this is moss that this orchid already had on top of the pot. And all I did was just harvest it and put it back on top of the orchid as a top layer. And it just looks really, really pretty. I think it's gonna take a little eternity for it to spread, but yeah, it really looks really, really pretty. So if I can make a little culture of this moss, whatever it is, I think it's gonna look pretty on top of um, orchids which like to stay moist all of the time. Alrighty guys, this has been it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Keep your fingers crossed for me and my little moss culture. I will be watching Brad's videos on the matter. I'll link you to him down below if you want to learn more about live sphagnum moss. And with that said, you know the drill, like or dislike this video below, subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos, tutorials, Q&As and other fun orchid subjects. And if you like YouTube to notify you whenever I upload a new video, just turn on notifications for my channel. Also, if you're interested in my little setup here, just check the description. I list the main products that I used down below. And with that said, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.